hello friends so we'll be continuing with the embedded systems and here in this we'll be learning about the hardware software code design and the programming models okay so the hardware software partitioning is done at early stages uh, of the embedded system designing process so the developers from the software group are uh, take care of the software architecture development and in the implementation of uh, softwares and the engineers from the hardware group are responsible for building the hardware required for the product okay so there is less interaction between these two teams uh, and the development happens either parallelly or uh, serially so uh, once the software and hardware is ready the integration is performed so all these steps comes under the traditional development approach of the hardware software co-design so now we'll see the fundamental issues uh, we are facing in the hardware software co-design okay so the first so the first one is model selection it captures and describes the system characteristics and specification so the second one is architecture selection so we have said that the model only captures the system characteristics and does not provide the information on how the system can be manufactured so the architecture selection specifies how a system is going to implement in terms of the number and the types of different components and the interactions among them okay so the next is language selection so a programming language captures a computational model and maps into the architecture okay so a model can be captured using multiple programming languages like uh, c c++ uh, java etc for the software implementations and the languages like uh, system c verilog uh, r etc are used for the hardware implementation certain languages are good in capturing certain computational model for example c++ is a good candidate for capturing an object oriented model okay so the only prerequisite in selecting a programming language for capturing a model is that the language should capture the model easily and the last we have the hardware software partitioning so the implementation aspect of a system level requirement is the hardware and software partitioning okay the factors such as reusability performance effort etc are used for making a decision on the hardware software partitioning okay now we'll see the computational models of uh, software hardware code design okay so the first one is data flow graph so data flow graph is a graphical representation of the flow of data and in it is a information oriented and it passes data between the other components so this is best suited for the modeling embedded system so you can see here an example so these circles represents the process and the arrow represents the transactions like inputs and output okay so the arrows coming to the uh, process is the input and the arrow that goes from the uh, process is the output okay so this is an example for uh, data flow graph that is x is equal to a plus b and y is equal to x minus c so here you can see the process uh, addition plus the a and b are the inputs of this process okay let me name it as a uh, capital a okay so this is the process capital a so the output from capital a is the x which goes as a input to the process number 2 that is b okay say it b 2 as a input and here you can see the c also coming as the input so then after the processing this will get a output as y okay so next we'll see about the acyclic data flow graph so in this acyclic data flow graph there will be no multiple values for the input and the output okay that is there does not form a cycle so the feedback input are the h samples for non cyclic inputs non cyclic inputs are the graph that does not form a cycle okay so next we'll see the control data flow graph so this is similar to data flow graph but here we have a condition box okay so this is a graphical representation of a program unit and this is process oriented and it doesn't manage or pass the da data between the components okay so the difference uh, from the data flow graph is that here we can see a decision box okay so that is the main difference between the data flow graph and the control data flow graph so you can see the example 
here uh, okay so the condition is if flag is equal to 1 h is equal to a plus b else that is if the flag is 0 or something else other than 1 then it is y is equal to a minus b so so you can see here if the flag is equal to 1 we'll go to the process okay process a where we uh, where we have an addition of a and b okay if the flag is 0 or other than not equal to 1 then it goes to the process b okay process b where the inputs are a and b itself okay then the output so the next is state machines so it is based on the states and state transitions and it describes the system behavior with states events actions and transitions okay now we'll see each one so the states so state is a representation of a current situation so what is the current situation or the current state that we describe as the state okay next is event event is an input event is an input to the state okay and event act as a stimuli for the state transition next the actions action is an activity that to be performed by the state missions and next last we have the transition transition is the movement from one state to the another so from our state a we are going to state b so that is a transition okay so these four are our important so the fsm fsm is a finite state mission that is the number of states are finite and the extension of the fsm is the hierarchical concurrent uh, FSM that is a finite state mission that is used for supporting a hierarchy and the concurrency and also uses the state charts for capturing the seat that is states, events, actions and transitions. So you can see an example for the state missions. Uh, this is the example of automatic uh, seat belt warning system. So you can see here the three states that is alarm off, waiting and the alarm on. So when the vehicle ignition is turned on and the seatbelt is not fastened within the 10 seconds, so the after the ignition on, the system generates an alarm signal. That is, when the time expires, the alarm will be on. And the alarm will be turned off when the alarm time expires or the driver fastens the seatbelt within time or else the ignition key is off. So there are three possibilities of uh, alarm becoming off. So if, uh, if the if the passenger fastens the seat belt before the timer expires, the alarm will be off itself. Okay, so these are all other events that takes place. So the next is a sequential model. So we know that the function or a process are executed in a sequence that is step by step. Okay, the program instructions are iterated and executed conditionally and the data gets transformed through series of operations the fsms are the good choice for sequential program modeling and the flow chart flow charts another important tool that is used for modeling a sequential program so we know that the fsm approach represents the state states that is states events actions and transitions whereas in the flow chart it represents the models of execution flow okay execution flow so next we'll see about the concurrent model okay so a system functionality is described using a multiple computation model okay it allows to describe the functionality of a system in terms of two or more concurrently executing subtasks. So we know that in a system we have a multiple task, right? So these multiple tasks run uh, simultaneously. So have to use the processor efficiently. So it uses multitasking scheme where the process requirements are split into multiple tasks. So if there is a process, there are processes divided into uh, multiple subtasks. Okay. These tasks are executed concurrently. So the events are used for synchronizing these execution of tasks. So next we'll see about the object oriented model. Okay. 
so it is a construction of objects using a collection of objects and that contains stored values of the instance variable found within an object okay so it allows object identification and communication while supporting the data abstraction inheritance and encapsulation so these are the important concepts or important terms that comes under the object oriented oriented model okay so it consists of developing object representation through three phases that is analysis design and implementation so object oriented model typically done via use cases and abstract definitions of the objects so the common language that is used uh, to do object oriented modeling is the uml